This week, Hunting and Outdoor Adventures comes to you from Alaska, where we're brown bear hunting off of Lake Iliamna. A small charter plane flew us out of Anchorage and on our way. Awed by the soaring peaks that stretched out around us, it seemed like no time before we were landing at Pedro Bay. But we still had a long way to go before we got to the lodge. This bouncy ride behind the four-wheeler was just to get us to the shore so we could jump on a boat and zip across the bay. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This hunt truly began over a year before when I started researching these creatures. Everybody's heard of a grizzly bear and a brown bear, but did you know that the grizzly and the brown bear are the same animal? The only difference is, is that a grizzly bear lives further inland than a brown bear does. Now, you know, one of the things that really motivated me to go on this brown bear hunt was the fact that I learned about the animal by reading everything I could get my hands on. And the best book that I found was called Grizzly Country. It's written by Andy Russell. After reading this book, I decided I'm going on the hunt. The next thing I needed to do was find an expert that could tell me more. By harvesting adult bears, boars, you're actually ensuring the survivability of, of several of the cubs. The first two years of a bear, brown bear's life are the most dangerous, and it's because of the predation by adult boars. And the boars kill these cubs to gain access to a, to a sow to breed. The last figures I heard, there's well over 50,000 bears in the state. And I've been in this business 25 years, and since that time, the bear numbers have actually increased in Alaska through some pretty sound game management policies. In 24 of the 26 game management, management units in Alaska, you're only allowed to harvest a bear every four years. This is to help promote these healthy bear populations. In two areas of the state, the, the grizzly bears are so numerous that they're deemed to be a nuisance and you can actually hunt a bear every year. Alaska state law requires us to salvage the skull in all instances, and then either the meat or the hide for the rest of the time. And a, a brown bear has never been a food source. And by leaving the carcass in the field, you're not doing a disservice to anyone. Several small animals feed on it. Eagles, ravens, foxes, mice, even on the bones. So nothing's going to waste out there. Now I was comfortable with the idea of hunting brown bear, but I needed information on how to go about it. In the fall time, these bears have the luxury of, of access to literally millions of salmon entering the streams and lakes in Alaska uh, in the coastal regions. And this, this source of protein allows these bears to have high quality feed in a critical time of the year for them. They have to pack away a lot of a lot of protein and, and caloric input to make it through the winter. There's plenty of activity on these salmon streams. There's eagles, there's seagulls, uh, brown bears, foxes, uh, wolverines, you name it. This salmon is an important, this base, the base of the food chain out there in a lot of ways. Stick around for more sights and sounds from Alaska. You won't want to miss this one. The most successful hunting method for brown bears in the fall is the spot and stalk method. You locate yourself near some suitable habitat, like a stream or a, a beach or something like that, and spend a lot of time on the knob with your, glass, with your field glasses, inspecting the surrounding area. And that's exactly what we did. Tony and I had checked our rifles to make sure they were still sighted in. That shot was about an inch to an inch and a half to the right, about perfect elevation. That's good enough for a big old bear. It's been my experience. I prefer to see my clients come up with a, uh, a minimum of, of a 300 Magnum. 
and, and up. And, and in my mind, a 375 is probably the optimum caliber for brown bear hunting. It was still dark when we were dropped off on the beach, but we managed to climb to the top of the ridge in time to see the sun begin its slow rise up from behind the distant peaks. We could see for miles from this vantage point, and all around us were small coves and inlets off the main lake. The perfect place to find a big old bear. I'd been up here a few months before fishing for trout with Jerry Pippen from Rainbow Bay Resort. Jerry works with a licensed bear guide and invited me on this hunt. The salmon were running strong then and I hoped they'd hold on until I came back. We were pleased to find out that some of the sockeyes had stuck around. Amazingly, we could see a group of them milling just below the surface even though we were positioned hundreds of feet above the bay. We were settled in up on the ridge, enjoying the scenery and wildlife that is Alaska. Iliamna Lake is one of the two places in the world to boast a population of these guys, freshwater seals. Just as I was starting to think it can't get any better than this, it got a lot better. This was a good sized mature bear, but not exceptional. Besides, it was the first day of the hunt, so we all agreed to just watch. trouble deciding if that tasty fish was worth braving the cold water. I guess his stomach got the better of him. Bears typically take their food back into cover to eat in safety. Hopefully there was a bigger bear in the area that this guy was trying to avoid. We didn't have to wait long for the brush to rustle again, but it was the same bear coming back for a second course. He took a good look around before seeking out another fish. Then he boldly tore into it out in the open right along the rocky beach. He made his way down the shore towards us to snatch a third fish. I guess he thought twice about his bold actions because he retreated back to cover with this fish. What better way to round out an incredible day than a spectacular Alaskan sunset? We awoke to a new morning and to a new game plan. With the weather has turned clear and cold like it is, I think we're going to go out here and hit the shoreline and just follow down the shorelines and actually look into the shores. And if we can see a bear that's walking along the beaches looking for fish in the water, 
and we'll just try to determine the direction of the wind, see if we can head him off and then approach him on the beaches. Okay. Folks, it got cold. We've got frost all over the dock. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Frost all over the dock, see? Chris is up here on the front of the boat. He's trying to, to get the ice off the windows. It's cold. beach has a bunch of floaters on it and the bears will get out here and walk around and here's some tracks here's a real nice visible track you can see his toe marks right here it's not real big but that's a that's a nice visible track and he put another paw right here and just kind of walking down the beach there's a bunch of blow down logs up here on the beach and these bears will get out here and walk through here and look for these fish that are floated up this beach you can see all kinds of tracks but look at this, this is really unusual. I've never seen anything perfectly ground. And what do you think would cause that? Well, the wind is real severe up in Alaska. And look at this, the wind blows this around and it creates a perfectly round little track right here. You can also see, look, these little bird tracks right through here. So you can tell with the sand the way it is, if there's a bear that's been moving on this beach, we're gonna be able to tell if he's a big one or not. Here is an old dead fish right here. You can see this right here. See the toes? That's his back paw. And then look at here. You actually see the heel mark. This, no, this is front. This is his back paw right here. Front and back. An old dead fish. Somebody at home may be thinking, oh, doesn't that stink? Folks, it's so cold up here. It doesn't stink. It's like it's in a refrigerator. You know, normally we've got uh, a lot of salmon right here on this beach where they're at the mouth of the river. But our, again, that weak run this year and there's just not any here. What sign we found is all pretty small bears. Uh, one bear that's big enough, but uh, without these fish, you just never know when they're gonna come by. So we'll just probably, move on? Probably not. Yeah, we'll just move on down. We'll be back with more Alaskan adventure. Don't miss this one. As the days progressed, we concentrated our efforts along the Iliamna River. The greatest density of salmon seemed to be here. We were finding sign and we were encouraged by the success of our fellow hunters, three buddies from Minnesota. The riverway was full of activity, and we had a great time watching all the wildlife around us. But we didn't see any bears. I had been told to look for bears in the water, and I'd even seen some in the rivers and streams when I was here fishing. We were heading downriver to the lodge late one evening after scouting along the river all day. 
an incredible sunset featuring silhouetted bald eagles tried to distract me. But I kept my eyes on the river ahead and spotted a bear feeding about 500 yards away. We quickly made our way to the shore and then headed towards a bear on foot. As we approached, he smelled us, but he couldn't see us. He was in the middle of the river and had to run to one bank or the other. He ran right towards us, and I was ready for him. What a shot! What a shot! I'll tell you what, that is the biggest trophy I've ever taken, Jerry. Oh, that is right. You see how close we got those points? Yeah, I know. I knew it was going to smell. I mean, we were drifting down the river. We have hunted this booger. This is a wonderful, wonderful animal. And folks, let me tell you one thing. This is a 300 wind mag. It's a Browning 300 wind mag. And this right here, a lot of people say it was too small a gun to come after a big old brown bear like this with. But you know what? It did the trick. As long as you hit them where they live, they're going to go down. Running, one shot. Bam, down he goes. Look at him. <laughs> 